Hello everybody, Michael Holman here with Kurtz Clocks, the Atmos Repair Specialist at www.kurtzclocks.com. And today we're going to take a look at the Atmos Clock winding system and uh, how it works here on this demonstration clock. It's a series of springs and counter springs that wind the Atmos Clock. So let's start off here with some parts identifications. Uh, first and foremost here we have the spring guide which is this plate here. We have the chain as you can see the end of it here where it's stopped with the chain stopper and another side view the chain runs through here running over that wheel the back of the movement plate there there's that wheel that allows this chain to function and, and uh, pull in and out here we have okay I mentioned the chain stopper then we have the axle core and ratchet which is this piece here which looks like this okay this is the axle core and ratchet and as you can see it has these teeth on this exterior and then uh, as well as here another set of teeth which are connected and hooked on to the mainspring this is what this looks like which is contained inside of the barrel here we have the barrel and barrel cover or you see it here here's your cover and here's your barrel which contains the mainspring inside of it and this axle core is what winds it and it connects uh, with this tab It hooks that mainspring and then from there we get the wind on it you can hear I got the click there so this is what rotates and winds up that mainspring nice and tight inside of the barrel and I'll kind of show you the way it looks when it's wound up tight give you an idea of how much uh, uh, mainspring actually looks like with this all wound up tight give you an idea here inside of the barrel Okay, and so this mainspring is lubricated with natural oil, Swiss oil, Mobius, and as it gets dry, gummy, and sticky, the mainspring is no longer allowed to slide against itself and release the power. So uh, the overhaul is basically the act of, of cleaning this up and getting the old oil off and putting some fresh stuff on it. And we have barrel, barrel cover, and we have the spring click. Now the spring click is a very small spring that's right here in between this um, axle and then this pulley and then we have the pulley spring which is connected to the opposite side of the chain providing a counter spring effort and here's a up close to that click spring so it looks like it has these teeth on it which match up with the teeth on the winding arbor to wind and then we have the counter spring and support blade which are right here and those operate on the outside of that axle core um, allowing only to rotate in one direction and stop on the other so we can get the clock wound up okay and so this is kind of the demonstration of this action but you will never see it occur uh, the reason being is that this winding system will not wind a mainspring up from nothing it actually only maintains the wind on the mainspring so holding this stable you can see what happens here with our counter spring on the back it gets all tightened up okay and as power is released power is slowly released from this mainspring 
you can see that coil spring will then have enough tension or strength to pull that chain and that's the the winding process right there is it's actually on the 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 bellows contraction which shrinks that you get the space now where the spring guide and counter spring are now strong enough to pull that mainspring and add some wind to it. So this is just a, a system of maintaining the wind on the main, mainspring. It'll never pump up an empty mainspring from nothing. And uh, a good way that you can kind of get an idea or indication if your bellow is flat is if you see a large amount of chain or excuse me, if you don't see much chain. So with a fully wound up mainspring, do that again here for you, you see a lot of chain here. I describe it as being connected at the six numeral. So if, imagine if we're facing this like a clock dial, 12 will be up at the top, 12 here, 6 p.m. would be here, or excuse me, 12 p.m., 9 p.m., 6 p.m. at the bottom. So if you have your chain at 6 p.m., I got my thumb in the way. If you have your chain at 6 p.m., you see a whole lot of it here on the winding arbor. Uh, as the power and, and tension is all relieved from the mainspring, you will hardly see any chain. Okay, so that means that this coil spring is is elongated as far as it can with the chain and whatnot and so uh, that's just a good idea you can take a peek through the side of your atlas and and get an idea whether the bellow is flat or not by looking at this winding arbor here like that so again a fully you know wound up and good bellow you'll ha you'll have a visual like this with lots of chain here empty that's what you'll see you'll see that uh, pulley spring instead of the chain um, so there's there's five springs here to be exact. We have the the coil spring, we have the pulley spring, we have that click spring. One more time, that's what this little guy is that click spring. Then we have this um, ratchet click, and then that's another spring, and then the support bar for it. And then, last but not least, we have our mainspring inside of the barrel. Um, a fully wound mainspring will provide nearly a year's worth of running time on the Atmos clock, anywhere between 8 to 12 months. Um, so, what that it tells you is that the Atmos clock runs on such low power that a fully wound mainspring will will power the clock for a year without any additional winding taking place and since it, it uses such little power or little torque on the on the gear train that any any uh, resistance dust goop gunk at these pivots here here any resistance there will be enough to stop the clock, which is why you have the Atmos contained inside of glass is to help prevent keeping any dust or resistance from building up. But it just happens over time. If the oil at these, at these two pivots uh, gets gummy and dry, just like the mainspring and gunk build up, you know, eventually the clock will stop and then it's time for cleaning and then you get it over to me. So back to the the way that this functions now is you'll never witness you'll never witness the Atmos clock winding um, sitting here surrounded by all of these Atmos clocks you know and this is about half of them occasionally I will hear that sound one little and that that's about as much wind as I'll ever witness and just because I have so many of them here is the only reason I even even get a chance to hear that most owners of a single Atmos clock will never even witness it so what what happens is as the power is is relieved from the mainspring and that that coil has enough tension now or, or recoil to pull that chain there you get a little wind and we're adding one link one length of chain at a time for the wind so very very minimal just a one little 
and that's as much wind as is necessary just to maintain the operating range on that mainspring. And uh, what else do we have here? So it, you know, power is released from the mainspring through the movement, at which point the tension of the the coil spring becomes sufficient enough to to wind and uh, this winding actually will take place during the bellows contraction so if the bellows expanded in the back of the drum here it's uh, you know making contact with this coil spring here as the bellow shrinks the coil spring extends out so it's actually on the contraction that you get the wind added to it obviously both of them are, are part of you know two sides of the same coin are part of the function but it's during the contraction that you get the coil spring to add some wind to it and uh, the winding usually takes place you know a couple times a year largely through the the change of the seasons is when you get kind of the most um, expansion and contraction on your bellow <clears throat> bellow unit and I went over the good way to <clears throat> kind of just eyeball and see if your bellow are flat is with the chain you know how much of it is visible here on the winding arbor and on the pulley and uh, it's good to note too that the bellow unit is just one component of a series of you know close to 12 parts here that are all required to function properly for winding the clock um, the bellow kind of gets a lot of attention being a specialization uh, specialized part within you know a specialization of Atmos clock so the the bellow gets a lot of attention but honestly all of these components have to be functioning and moving properly in order to keep the clock wound up so any goop or gunk or dryness in, in any of these will uh, stop the clock from winding at which point you're kind of on a on a time ticker now counting down the amount of time before the clock actually stops running and that can you know be anywhere from 8 to 12 months you know if I if I had this clock all put together kind of like this one this one here this is the first stage of the repair <clears throat> that I go through after an overhaul is to let it run this way without the bellow drum on it and you know as you can see the clock continues to run just fine without any bellow attached it's just not going to be winding itself and this is just part of the step that I, I go through before putting it all back together and uh, you know obviously testing the function of the bellow is part of this process too so that's where we're at on this specific Atmos clock this is a 526.5 um, so we did the overhaul on it a couple days ago and just letting it run this way and then I will go and uh, get all the glass all cleaned up get all the gunk off of them and just a side note since we're here with this 5265 you can see that they have real glass on this one and it's sitting in this metal tray so there is a set of gaskets on here that I go back and uh, replace new as you can see here these gaskets have gotten all dried up here's one they have them on, in each corner they're all dried up shrunken up and hard so in order to prevent this uh, top glass from getting broken in the mail on the way back home I go and replace those gaskets and these 5265s were made in the 50s so they they had real glass in here with the metal tray and you know breakage in the mail is is something that you know was a possibility with these old timers so then they moved to a plexiglass top for the 528s and uh, that came after 528-8 that came after the 528-6 also had this similar style and they went to the plexiglass just to prevent these from cracking or lucite I believe is what Jigalakult calls them uh, prevent that from cracking but then those plastic ones get uh, scratched and scuffed very easily so you always want to use a damp cloth and get any of the dust or abrasive off of it before wiping it down because you put a bunch of scratches in those but that's just for the 528.8 um, and then they actually went back to glass again for the 540 but it's contained in a rubber gasket and then the top lid is a little bit different 
designed to prevent any glass from banging against a metal tray and cracking and breaking. So if you have a plastic top on your 528.8, um, you know, that's original. That's how they, they uh, did that. It, it isn't something that's been replaced. Um, when, when it comes to engineering, they engineer uh, a problem, you know, to get rid of a problem engineered out of it, what then new issues arise. Um, so like with the 519s, you have the liftoff covers, uh, which are very tight and snug fitting, and then people will catch their minute hand with that lid when lifting it off and snap their fourth wheel pivot which is you know what the minute hand is plugged onto there and so to get rid of that they uh, went with the press down front tab that you see on the 528 8s with the front glass panel that you lift out well the new problem with that is uh, people will drop the front panels and break them and so it's just a just a thing you know in kind of the engineering world is you can engineer around one problem and then a uh, few more will arrive but replacing a front panel is is much simpler than than the fourth wheel because you gotta disassemble the entire movement to replace that but uh... anyway i digress um, yeah so this is our, our winding system on the atmos clock this is how it functions it's not something you actively see and if you look at the schematics of the clocks and and diagrams it's not exactly clear that you you're not going to actively see winding you know you might get lucky and hear one little tooth click and that's about uh, all you'll ever see or hear out of it um, so yeah, this is just a quick little video example of the <clears throat> Atmos clock winding system. This is really where the brilliance, I mean the whole thing is brilliant, but this uh, winding system is really where the genius lies within the Atmos clock. Um, so that's kind of all I have for this one. Um, thank you for watching, for liking, please subscribe, make sure you do that and uh, hit the bell notification. I'll put out all kinds of information for these Atmos clocks just to make owning them uh, more of a pleasure and, and kind of fill a gap for information on these. But there's, there's quite an uh, absence of info and I hope to fill that gap with as much info about the Atmos clock as I can. Just out of respect for the, the clock, the invention itself and uh, for the beautiful people who own them and for the amazing company that designed and created them Gigalekult. so thank you again I don't think I forgot anything but uh, this is it today and uh, take care God bless be safe stay healthy and happy ciao